So, oh. okay, my mouse might be very loud. Let me just find something to put underneath. Yeah, that's much better. Beautiful. Okay, yeah, so today we will talk about authentication uh, in Node. And we will talk about just basic things, basically how you can create and implement some authentication, how to make your application and authentication secure, at least basic security. And yeah, so we will talk about two things, about uh, salting your uh, data and about hashing. Ricardo, do you know anything about that, about salting and hashing? Okay, okay, yeah. But you're not actually working with uh, authentication a lot. Well, generally we use frameworks that has libraries that do that. Mm -hmm. You could just write an authentication uh, yourself, but it's just going to be a very basic one. I don't know what the standards for you guys in JavaScript are in uh, PHP. Uh, the most recent algorithm is a Bcrypt. Uh, yeah. Uh, on, you know, not long ago, the MD5 is what was used in WordPress and everything else. But all of that is technically managed by libraries on its own. So mm -hmm. we just use the libraries. Yeah, so the frameworks. We, we actually will talk about Bcrypt today as well. Because as you said, this is like a, I think it's kind of industry standard. Everybody, like almost everyone's using Bcrypt. Good. So yeah. Okay. So uh, authentication, as you might guess, uh, allows user to create account, uh, right? Uh, allows user to log in, store password securely, and uh, remember the user basically in your database, and make it uh, make uh, users be able to log in. Uh, so we will talk about salting and hashing, as I said. And the first stop is salting. So salting, basically it's adding something uh, as a kind of part of every single record uh, before you store into the database or for, uh, when you store it uh, anywhere, basically. So that means that if the user has a password, password one, two, three, we will add some salt, right? That can be whatever you want. So in our case, we just put in salt ABC. And in database, you will store password123 salt ABC. So this is how you will salt your uh, the, the records, uh, every, every record. And uh, that is why uh, it's like you kind of uh, hiding, kind of, uh, make more complicated uh, to break uh, or brute force the, the, the password. So salting is just, just adding extra bit to the password to make it longer. And if it's longer, it's just harder to break if somebody is uh, brute forcing your database or whatever. Uh, yeah, so this is salting. And uh, you, you basically, uh, yeah. Any uh, protections you need to have on your database as well? Like, I'm just, I have no idea, but I'm just thinking it's good to have like this kind of salting, but then if the hacker knows the salting kind of method and yeah. has access to your database, then you're all screwed, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That is why it's not just about salting, and we will talk about that <laughs> today. Sorry. Uh, salting is just one tiny thing that you can do with your uh, passwords. Oh, sorry. Uh, so yeah, uh, you basically you can uh, add another salt uh, and get another password. So you can basically when you're creating, you can add. Uh, theoretically, you can have a few salts uh, and adding them to your records. So as Ricardo said. Uh, we are using Bcrypt because, again, it's the most popular package. So if you go to Bcrypt, 
uh, we just need to install to our packet to our project as you can see weekly we have 600,000 uh, almost yeah 600,000 uh, downloads per week so uh, here let me just quickly install npm install bigcrypt And uh, you can specify how many rounds you want to uh, run through your password. So uh, here, you basically, it will generate specific, uh, it will kind of hash, try to hash your password and add salt to it. I'll show you in a, in a second uh, how to do that. So uh, we're just importing Bcrypt, right? Yeah, we just let's let's add const uh, salt rounds. Uh, by default, people use ten. So Bcrypt is a kind of slow library, and uh, it's it is intentionally because uh, it's harder to uh, break it because it's just slow. Uh, I can't go with very details about that because uh, I'm not an expert in uh, like cybersecurity. But I know that this is this one is deliberately slow, just to make harder for other people to break it. So uh, yeah, basically this is the logic. Uh, you have. Let me just take this one. Uh, so let me just add quickly. And here I want to add some passwords. Right, password one two three. And here, as you can see, you will get, uh, so let me just refactor to um, our error functions. So let's console log salt uh, to see what we will, what salt we will get. Salt. And we will see what, how our password will be hashed. Uh, mm -hmm -hmm. So yeah, and here we will have console log uh, hash, hash, right? So now if I try to run uh, no daemon, you can see that salt is this, right? And the hashed password is this one. So this is how you will, <coughs> sorry, this is how you will uh, salt your password and hash the whole thing. So now you will store in your database when you start to try to store the, uh, the data, you will store in this format. So the password will, uh, will look like this, which definitely not something that's very easy to break or just guess. So what does hash do? So uh, it, the password is hashed, right? So to get the actual value from here, it's almost impossible because everything is possible. So it's almost impossible. And so you can't retrieve the, the actual password. So you can't, uh, if, you, if somebody will steal data from database, they still don't understand what was the password and they still can't log in. So always, so salt is adding is adding some text to it, so to make it unrecognizable. Yeah, 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 exactly. So you will have something and then like that. Hash does it mean modifying it? Or? Yeah, yeah, it modifying it. <coughs> sorry. Uh, so you can specify how many rounds. Uh, not sorry, not how many rounds, but how. Uh, where is this uh, hash? Because you, you can define basically the system of hashing. Let me just find it. Hash. Because you have different system of hash, like HSA, I believe. The, the people in finance generally pay well somebody else to do this. To, to do what? I'm looking with the finance guy in here. It will be security <laughs> guy who, who does this for him. All right. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, so basically uh, you, you're storing that kind of data, right? And when user try to log in, you basically, uh, the Bcrypt has a m function, which is uh, Bcrypt dot compare I, I was just trying to understand the word hash because i know this word from the bitcoin kind of hashing when you mine bitcoin but i i, I didn't know what the hash actually means to, what to do yeah what let's to hash. hash me let's actually see uh hash programming let's see what the actual definition Hash function is any function that can be used to map data or arbitrary size of arbitrary size to fixed size values. So basically, yeah, you're just mapping. It's like a, you have a behind the scene, you have an algorithm that's uh, general. Remember, yeah, okay. remember the ROT13 exercise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I know. Okay. So, so ROT13. So it means that when you do hashing in Bitcoin, because basically, when you hash, it, it, you kind of have a code you need to solve. And uh, yeah, okay, got it. I understand now. Yeah, so uh, your ROT13, also basically you hashing the password, but it's very simple algorithm behind, right? Yeah. But this one is yeah. a bit, uh, they use just more sophisticated algorithms to, uh, to do that. Correct. Yeah, so here, now you uh, the, the basically compare takes two, uh, three params. First parameter is your plain password, right? So in our case, imagine that user want to log in and providing the uh, regular just uh, its password. Then you try uh, to basically you take this. Um, that you want to compare and the callback. So error and the hash and here, uh, not, not hash, sorry. So uh, it takes basically the result. Uh, oh yeah, it should take error by the way. I'm pretty sure that I saw, uh, I saw it, maybe that was in previous word. Oh yeah, yeah, here. So they actually, yeah, 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 that's fine. So they have it, you have results. And you can basically check console log just to check does it match. Uh, so here we want to have result. Uh, let's rename this variable. And here we will have something like that. So as you can see that result is true, right? Uh, if we, let me just, uh, commented out this one, commented out. Uh, yeah, we probably can just do one, commented out all of that. So you see that it is true, right? So if you change uh, that to this, now it's false, so it's not matching. So it, it used the static algorithm behind and that can decrypt uh, and basically it can check, does it match or not? And some companies you might find uh, like MD5, I think. Let me just check MD5 uh, encryption uh, online. Just want to show you. So what you can do if you want to encrypt your password, imagine that you have password one, two, three, crypt. So this is the hashed value. And if you go to decrypt and try to decrypt, ooh, wait a sec, let me refresh. Ooh, what's going on? Sorry, something wrong with their website. Uh, what's going on? Right, they want me to register. <laughs> Let me just quickly check. Mm -hmm. MD5 decrypt online. 
maybe this one. So if you put hash, decrypt, hash is not in our data. Yeah, so it doesn't, see that's the point. My point is that uh, they build in databases uh, to, to create, uh, they have a databases where they mapping like very common passwords to hashed one. And you basically, if you provide in hash, they can't decrypt it, but they uh, can, they basically can do, they can find in their database the map and when they find it, they give you the result. So let me actually, cause that one, that the other service was better. Um, let me just try to clean my history. Maybe it just want to charge me. Um, performance application, clear, refresh. What? Hello. Hey, we lost you. <laughs> Probably this is because I clear storage. <laughs> uh, it just locked me out from all my accounts. Okay. I think you're encrypting yourself. So stay away from us. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try. So if I put my decryption and try to decrypt, nah, I still want to charge me. So basically, what they do, if they have your that password, like hello one two three. Actually, maybe we can have one to uh, hello one to three. So if you have use something very common, they have you. They might have this in their database. Hello one to three. Let's say encrypt, copy, and let's try decrypt. No, they don't have. What kind of passwords they have if they don't have the very very simple one? One two three four. One two three four five six. Encrypt. Uh, and decrypt. <laughs> I don't know, to be honest, what they are. So yeah, anyway, the idea is that people, they don't decrypt it, but they just map it manually, build in database, and they, in that way, they can, uh, they can basically help you to decrypt, kind of decrypt, right? Because they already did pre-setup and check every different, like different combination. So if you have something very unique, that means that they will uh, probably not have the uh, the the code the hash in their database, and they will not map your uh, they will not decrypt your password. Also, uh, uh, there is a website. Uh, I've been pound, yeah, where you can check your uh, email and hasn't been pound. Let's say. Have Alexander. Yeah, that's quite scary. I, I tried that. Uh, have you tried that? Yeah. Yeah. And you can see your. Um, I could find like some very very old passwords. Yeah. From me. Okay. Yeah. So as you can see, my passwords were exposed in different breaches. In, in 2012. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's me. Because because it locked me out. Uh, yeah. Can you see? It? Uh, wait a sec. Oh, yeah. Can you see it now? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, here you can see that I've been breached, and my old email been breached base. Uh, this one in this uh, break, I don't know what was that, in 2019, security researchers we need Troya. Then drop, Dropbox 2012, 2016 LinkedIn. So yeah, I mean, a few times, right? And they actually, they hear, they're saying uh, what, uh, how my data has been stored. And here they have half of them SH1, half was Bcrypt. Right, so uh, yeah, if you see that the data has been stolen, but they were using BigFript, you probably safe. 
because uh, they probably will not, not guess the passwords because they have just hashed values. So yeah, basically that's fine. But still, uh, this is the, the, the funny part with, uh, with, with the security. So as you can see that uh, here, we basically can compare uh, and check uh, that does our password uh, match the actually stored data, right? So if your user uh, try to log in, uh, sign up, you just store in uh, their data in hashed format. And uh, when you try to, when they try to log in, you use Bcrypt compare just to uh, compare the, the actual password uh, with hashed one, the, the provided password with hashed one, right? So let me uh, quickly, so now if I save it, that should be true, brilliant. Uh, ooh, that sign me out as well, oh my goodness. Okay, I still have an access, beautiful. Uh, yeah, so, uh, <coughs> sorry. You have like how many rounds you want to uh, run your salt to generate. And uh, yeah, so basically this is more, more rounds, uh, more secure that will be. But again, people normally use 10, like a common number. Uh, yeah, and then you use uh, Bcrypt compare, uh, where you just checking is it true or false. So let's actually create. Uh, I don't want to say something stupid here, but like, if um, I don't know, you you're building your website and you use Bcrypt for your passwords. Um, if I am a hacker and I get the database with all the Bcrypted, um, can I also use Bcrypt on my side on my end and and kind of encrypt your stuff like you just did with um, these websites? No. So this is uh, what the, those websites does. So. Because they know that password one two three is this, that is why they uh, can provide you the data that when you provide this, they will return you that. Just because they have it in their database, but they create it manually. They checked, okay, so that will be generated to this, and then they will map. But if you have some, okay, that's why when you create a password, they ask you to make it complicated. Yes. Uh, oh, no, I understand. Okay. But if your password is something like uh, like that, right? They probably don't have it in their database. Got it. Okay. So now if you generate the uh, uh, hash this one, let me just show you. So now we are hashing this. Uh, and yeah, we have a new hash and that will be, again, they will not, it will be very hard to break because you have a uh, long password. And if you add some numbers, some random numbers, uh, and you maybe add some, uh, characters like exclamation mark, it's very hard to, uh, basically to imitate this one. Yeah. Okay. That's why we should be using last pass, I guess. Yeah, so uh, password one, two, three, probably not the best one. Yeah. Uh, okay, so our goal is to create a sign up and sign in, uh, yeah, login and sign up forms and try to, so we will create a front end for that quickly. And yeah, so, and try to implement this uh, salting things. So let me just comment it out all of that. And uh, we need an express, right? I will import express, express, uh, that will be express, const app, cross express, uh, then the middleware uh, app dot uh, use where we have express dot json uh, and we want to have app dot get 
where we have the endpoint response request response and we want to have respond uh, for now with response dot send hello and now let me actually move this to the top because it's just static variable and now I want to have app dot listen on port and function that should be console log listening on port last port that's old syntax and port we will specify here will be 3000 oh yeah we, we have postman which we probably don't need uh, so listening on port 3000 okay so let's go actually to our uh, local host 3000. Yeah, we have our hello, right? Uh, yeah, great. Let's actually create, a st we will talk about server side, side rendering on uh, Wednesday. But for now, I will just quickly create, uh, do I want to create? Le yeah, I don't want to confuse you. Let me create another folder. Uh, call it FE, uh, FE front end, and there I will create a index HTML. I will create a JavaScript as well, uh, index.js for now. Okay, so this one. What do we want? We want to have two forms, right? First form for sign up. So input uh, multiply three. So we want to have text. We want to have password and we want to have password, right? So we need to add some IDs probably or names, name, uh, let's call it username. So we have, an, we can, so we can collect data, name, password, and name, uh, password confirmation. Yeah, so three fields. And the last one is button, which will be submit. Something like that. And this one, let me just add ID. Uh, ID should be, ID should be, I don't know, sign up, sign up. Does it mean that whenever you put your password and username on a website, the, user, the, 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 the website actually know what it is? Uh, yeah, so when you're providing, uh, yeah, website knows that, but it doesn't store anywhere, right? Okay, because it directly doing the hashing and the salting so you and they, you, store, they store only the, the hash version of it so basically when you create a profile on any website you kind of trust that website but uh, so you provide your uh, like password that is why everybody is suggesting to use a unique passwords everywhere for every single platform and yeah. uh, that is why when you provided th this data they supposed to take it, send it to server, hash and store uh, in hashed format. Yeah. Yes. Uh, just, to add, just to add a bit more uh, to Thomas, yes, your passwords are stored in the browser and those are, are accessible to anyone sitting in front of your computer if it's not you. Uh, Google will store the, the Google browser will will just uh, have that in a way that Hello? General terms on the security that we as uh, beginners in the subject 
need to understand like the most basic thing to get a simple app password protected. If you are eventually going into a production environment, there are a lot more of other measures that must be taken. For example, uh, a general good practice is that the database is not stored in the same server. So you have your having one server, you have the database in a different server, and you build a VPN between those two servers so that the server with the database will only be accessible to a connection that comes from the IP address that is in the server where the apps is stored. So really the security thing is like a never ending subject and obviously not something that you yeah. can cover all in, in, in short thing. Sure. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's what we're learning here is like, okay, if you're gonna build an app uh, or a prototype, this is what you have to do in JavaScript to have a login and registration and get the people get in. But going to production, it's a, a different story. Most, mostly, I mean, going a lot farther than just JavaScript and getting a lot involved in networking stuff. Yep, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so uh, again, we're covering like basics, so you can uh, create basic security, etc. But if you build in a sophisticated platform, normally you have dedicated cybersecurity engineer <laughs> who's doing that. Or you uh, quite often what people do, they use uh, just third party services and they just connect in, uh, their services to uh, the application and this is it. So they don't handle in that because they are not experts. And like, it's not just like small companies, big companies uh, quite often outsourcing such uh, tasks to separate companies. Yeah, okay, no. Um, obviously, I, I understand that we're not gonna cover all, I just was curious about how it all works, but thank, thank that. Um. Yeah, so now I think that we have sign up and login, we just need to quickly create a you just want to create an endpoint, right? App dot. Right, I need to define method post here for both. Uh, method post. So yeah, we will post when we submit, we will submit the data and send it to the backend. Uh, so app post. That will be sign up, sign up. And here we have, request. and let's check request. Uh, so we have con console log request dot body. Something like that. We also need to, uh, yeah, we probably will not have the data. I, I need to, because when you submit uh, without actually posting with fetch, uh, like building the, with JavaScript, uh, you, that the format is not JSON, it is uh, express. Is it uncode, un... URL encoded, yeah, URL encoded. Uh, so this is pretty much what we're doing. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you the difference. So if I here, if I uh, do, I don't know, a sale, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And if I submit, you can see that I'm passing my data here, right? So it is, it comes in a URL. So to encode the URL and convert it to the object, uh, we use this middleware URL encoded. And yeah, so now. So how did you do to pass it to the URL? Is it the, uh... Uh, this is native behavior of form. So here, okay. because I have form, I have action on submit, which will uh, send something here and hit uh, with method post, right? Mm. Okay, got it. And so you will uh, automatically have this format 
you have um, where you have user and then password. Yeah. So let me let me actually uh, so we have sign up. Let me just double check with this sign up post. Uh, yep. So let me try again. Refresh. Sale. One two three. One two three. Submit. Uh, yeah, we need to go here. And as you can see, we are having the object, right? So we're not sending back anything to the user, but we are uh, here, we have an object. So by having this express.url encoded, yeah. you, you took out the, it's not showing in the URL anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, so we are getting from the, your, the URL and transforming that to the valid object. Yep. Exactly. Into request the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now it is inside body as a regular JSON object that you can send with inside body. So sorry. So again, so if we took out the line eight, it doesn't come out as a as a console log. Yeah. So let me show you. Oh. Refresh. Sale. One two three. One two three, one two three. Submit. Empty object. Right. Yes. B because we we not getting all params. But it's then it's it's showing on your your then. Uh, no, it, it does. It's still loading because we do not respond with anything. So let. Ah, okay, so it's a separate topic then. Yeah, it just respond, send. This is what we normally do on every call, right? You know, success, yeah. for for example. Save. Let's try again. So we seal. One, two, three, two, three. Submit. We have success. And yeah, we have the, the whole your uh, the whole object. If we uncomment this, call back oh call back, refresh, one to uh let's sale, one to three, one to three, submit. As you can see, you don't have anything because we're redirecting uh to that to five hundred to five uh yeah to, to sign up basically. Ah, okay, so if you had taken out sign up, then you would see it all. Yeah, yeah because we are redirecting to, to this one, to port 3000, to the backend, right? I'm not sure I understand that. So this comes from backend. So basically we are on the backend side. <laughs> it is confusing. So here we starting from the front end, uh, here it's rendered on the front end server and when we submit it we're redirecting to the back end server right yes so uh, for ricardo that might be convenient because uh, this is how php you uh, work is working basically you you sending pages uh, from front end to back end from back end to front end yes yeah so, but this is PHP. Uh, yeah, so, uh, okay. So let's create some functions to store the data and decrypt the data. Let me just, uh, maybe I need to create another file to, I don't know, decrypt. Decrypt dot JS. Uh, so let me just actually want to move it here, decrypt, and here we will use our thing. So we will create something like export uh, const uh, hash password. 
and we will have we will pass password from the front end and we will do all this logic so we will take uh, uh, salt we need to have salt rounds so we don't want to keep it here anymore we just put in here and now we generate salt then we generate hash from the password right and then uh, we want to return it so uh, the only problem I don't like these uh, callbacks because uh, uh, yeah I don't like this uh, because you, you, because it's it's hard to return something to uh, above but you can do return turn hash uh, result result and we will return result and we have return here and return here return something like that so let's try if I try to import const uh, be crypt uh, uh, require but not bcrypt we want to require our bcrypt.js so now we will have we potentially can just destructure this one and have hash password sorry so if you have hash password let's we are getting from body let me just test it first of all i want to make sure that my function is working console log one two three four five save beautiful export expected token export is it because of module exports yeah potentially module or export modules export mo modules right is it ex modules no module exports yeah and we have our hash password something like that we don't need this just accidentally so okay yeah let, let's uh save yeah it doesn't return us anything uh i'm just thinking how can we actually push it up um does it return us hmm any ideas how can we push this one so hash this is a callback let me just check their documentation. So what do we have? We have uh, generate, generate salt uh, function calls separate generate salt and hash is separate function calls. Okay, so you can actually do it in a plain one with hash salt rounds. Okay, yeah, let's try to do in this one. In this way uh, here is just our password and you have your hash return hash I'm just checking uh, does the bcrypt return what anything or it doesn't yeah it's still undefined uh, what is a nice way of doing that So the you need to run hash password? Or no, no. no we, we're running. The, the problem is that this doesn't return to the level uh, to the level above, right? So, uh, yeah. so uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just a callback. I'm wondering, I'm just guessing. I don't know how it works. Uh, but can we do something like const? 
I think uh, our hash equals await and console log uh, our hash. I'm just wondering, will that work? Yeah. Oh, so it is working. We are guessing right. Yeah, so it is working. We can use await. But why then it doesn't... So see that if this callback, it won't return us uh, the value from here. But if we refactor to async await, it is actually working. So I, again, I was guessing because normally how this is how callbacks works, uh, work. So yeah. So the callback is asynchronous then? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we can basically can do return. Right. Uh, now we have data. Brilliant. So here, because we have a sign up, that should be async because we will get our await const uh, hashed password. Uh, and I want to hash password with uh, dot password, right? And we will check, do we actually getting uh, anything from there? Password because in your HTML you defined as password. Yeah, because we have in HTML we have a password here. Yeah. Yeah. So let me just try. Uh, sale one two three one two three. Submit. Woo. So argument required. Oh, I think that we. Uh, data doesn't mean that we just messed up with the data let me just check ah right see it's still uncommented that is why so but that might push us to actually before we doing the hashing we might want to check uh do we have this data right because maybe uh, if it doesn't exist, we want to return. So we want to validate our object basically, but yeah, let, let's do it in a second. Let me just, we can actually send hashed password back to the user. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so when we successfully do that, then we we are uh, we are sending the hashed password. So let's try. So again, refresh. Still one two one two three one two three. Submit. Ooh, we have an object. We have a promise. Right. Await. You should help me with this one. You know that that if you have a sync, then we need to have a wait. Sale one two three one two three submit yeah so now we're get, getting the uh, hashed password right and now we basically we can store this password so but like for sign up first of all we want to check we want to do a few checks we want to check does our password matches so let let me actually destructure my uh, password request.body uh, does it match uh, with uh, <coughs> sorry password confirmation password confirmation was it like that from here password and password confirmation yeah so we want to have two variables and we want to check if password matching password confirmation right oh sorry we want to do this and we want to send the response to the user else 
we can respond with something like response status uh, I don't know 403 status 403 I think uh, and the message should be sent something like password should match password confirmation something like that so let's try uh, here refresh so facile then one two three and one two three four submit password should match password confirmation right so yep let's try again let's sail one two three one two three submit yeah we are getting our hashed password which is great so theoretically we can pass uh json and that can be uh an object with i don't know user name will be our username user name right so theoretically we can just put this comma and uh, password will be our hashed password uh, yeah so we will respond with a nice object see that we are getting the nice object as a response okay so the next step is i want to actually sign in uh, let's actually create a, a user we want to store the data right we want to create a db file, uh, file with our users and maybe you can help me <coughs> Sorry, uh, you're gonna help me to do a setup. So, uh, yeah, oh, sorry. So what I need to do to do a setup, because I want to read, first of all, I want to, uh, I want to have a FS, right? Because we will work with our file systems, file system. So now, if I have a file system, if it's successful, I want to do what? FS write. Um, write file sync. And then you need to put in your JSON. Yeah, you got in your uh, address. And... Yeah, and here we will do stringify and we will pass basically this object right yes the user object yeah so this is our new user uh, let me ju I'm just thinking to make it clear cleaner const user something like that and then we pass user here and we respond with the user Something like that. Doesn't password need to be um, the, 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 the second element need to be like um, as a string and not that this is yeah this is hash password but then the the ID sorry the um, the element next to hash password. I was just wondering if it needs to be uh, with, with some comma or some brackets. Uh, where here? No, the one below, the one before that, yeah, this one. No, no. So here we have comma because we basically have, uh, sorry, we have this, right? Yeah. Th this is regular object. Oh yeah, okay, All right. This is pretty. This is it. Ah, okay. The confusing thing was username was just the lower. Okay. Yeah, and because username, username, we can use short syntax. Yeah. Okay. And uh, if you follow the good convention, if you have that kind of sh short syntax, that should come last for readability. 
Okay. Yeah, just a convention. Okay, yeah, so we, we create a new user, which is great. And we're writing that to the database and responding to the user. So let's let's try. So the promise will always over override this one you need to know. Yes. Yeah, you're right. So we uh sorry. Did it just create a user? No. Okay, brilliant. Uh yeah, so here uh, I just want to say hey, one, two, three, one, two, three, submit. Ooh, we don't do anything. What's going on? Why? Uh, file, write file sync. Why DB JSON? Why we don't writing anything? Hmm. Any ideas? What am I missing? Console log. Is it the JSON you're looking at or can you JS? Uh, sorry? Uh, oh, you're right. You're right. My bad. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so in my JSON, I have the user, right? So, yeah, we have one user. Uh, awesome. Let's try and uh, as, your, as you said, if I try to reload and Alex and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, submit. All right. Let me just close. Do not save. Open. Yeah. Now we have Alex, as you said, because we are rewriting. So what we want to have actually is just let me create another function const add user to db and we will take user right and we will do what we will uh we need to have this here but first we need to const users we will have what you want to read yep. uh, the DB JSON file and yep, yep, yeah, exactly. Convert, convert it. To, that's the exercise I was doing yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I want to read my file. Then I want to. So I can call it actually raw users. Then I have users equals uh, JSON parse, parse raw users, and then. I will just do spread all users, comma, and, then spread your and, and just put, not oh, spread, okay. just put the whole user. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So theoretically, I'm just thinking, because uh, here I have just one user, right? Uh, so that should be an array, technically. So. We want to make our, or that should be an object with, maybe it can be an object with users. And that will be an array of users. Something like that. So let me just remove our first user. That should be an, uh, an array. Oh, that should be an object. Did you do that because you want it to be an array of objects, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that should be an object and there we will have just a property users, which should be an array. Ah, oh, okay. So, yeah, I thought we were saying it's an array of objects rather than an object of array. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we uh, let me try. Now, if you go to refresh, Sale, one, two, three, one, two, three, submit. Did we break something? Users is not iterable. Right, this is the whole object. Mm. Users dot users. Like this. Or, as you were right, 
we can just do this just an array so let's sail one two three one two three submit again what's going on why it's not iterable uh Ah, you need to put again your, your bracket here. Let's try. Sale, one, two, three, one, two, three. Submit. Okay. Yeah, so now we have an array and we have one user. And if we go back, change to Alex, one, two, three, one, two, three. Submit. We have two, right? By the way, you might notice that's exactly so is even if you decide that okay i use uh password one two three and uh it will be hashed to some value like this so i can look in database who has the same password right so you can't do that is it because the hash methodology is is you know, randomly assigned and different for each. That's yes. Each. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that is why it's not just pick one, uh, accidentally pick one or intentionally pick one and uh, basically crack many passwords. So you never know. So now the next step is that I want to implement uh, our uh, post method for logging, right? So uh, post, and here I want to have for logging, logging, I think, request, and again, we will get this, but we don't have per, uh, confirmation. And what we want to have now is we have password we have username and first step is to find basically to read the database right so let me just actually create another function const read db and that will be just these two lines and i will return an object return so here I can just have users. So I'm reading database. So we can reuse this function. We don't want to repeat ourselves. Uh, yeah, so now what we will do here, we have users const uh, selected user. Remember we were talking with you, Thomas, about that selected user index. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. want to find by username. Yeah, uh, right. Username equals username. Yep. So we are checking the username. When we found one, we want to actually uh, check is the password valid. So what I, I just want to implement another function, which will be our compare, right? So is valid valid password it's valid password and we will pass the password and we need to have basically we want to check the actual password and hashed password right so we need two things is it a convention to have your file separately or yeah yeah you uh, i mean you always want to uh, split uh, everything into small fun uh, files and even this one should be in a separate file okay. because you, you don't want to keep one huge file here you want to have just routes yeah and the whole logic can be outsourced elsewhere okay. so uh yeah let me just paste everything here uh we are passing password and we are passing hashed password 
right? And we're just removing this because we want to return await return await this one, right? So we're comparing the passwords. Is valid password. Let me go back. Return true or false. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is why the, my variable name is is valid password. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, so we found index. Then, um, what do we want? If, let's say, is valid password, where we will pass user. Uh, the first, the first one is. But what was the first one? My variable password and hash pot. Okay, so password is uh, just password. This is what we are receiving from the front end. And the second thing is uh, users. Uh, yeah, dot, uh, dot, no, not dot, square brackets, selected user index. We, Actually, maybe you can use find and return the whole user. I have selected user, right? And then we can just use user, uh, selected user dot uh, password, right? So that should return true or false. And then if so, then we will uh, respond status uh, 200 successful and uh, let's say send uh, user or access granted right else response uh, we want to status 500 i think the right one is unauthorized invalid password something like that yeah, yeah. so we're checking and yeah so let's see let's see what we have uh if i will remember my passwords <laughs> i think it's one two three so uh yeah if i try to use Alex and one, two, three, four, that should be unauthorized. Ooh, access granted. Was it my password? <laughs> uh, okay, let me just put some random. Yeah, still granted. Okay, we're doing something wrong. Um, so let me check. Console log. Uh, what is password and what is selected user password? I want to see am I doing the right thing? So we have password and we have this. Okay, okay. So we're actually doing the right thing. I think that this one. Hmm, that's odd. Okay, so if I put this here and this here, oh, uh, I need to wrap this one as well. Do, 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 do. Uh, let me just quickly copy this. Uh, I just want to basically save this one, comment it out, everything, because I just, oh yeah, I can just put it on the very top. <laughs> and console. Uh, response. Uh, let me check const uh, result and console log re result 
result, right? So we want to check, is it actually working? Uh, just to test it. Uh, all right, I'll test and test because it's declared already. Bcrypt is not defined, sorry for that. So we're putting Bcrypt. Result false, okay. So that actually working, right? So what's going on here? If it's false, that should be false, right? Uh, let me, okay, const test. I want to check it here. So we can remove this. We don't need bcrypt here. And I want to console log tests here. I know what's going on. That returns promise. That is why. Because we don't have a wait here, it returns promise and promise is an object and that is why it's true always. That is why we just put a wait here and that should work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that might be annoying sometimes. So, uh, Vasil, one, two, three, four, five, submit, invalid password, right? And we are getting an error, which is 500. This is what we defined. Beautiful. If I do one, two, three, submit, hmm, what is my password? One, two, three, four. Come on. <laughs> I think it was one, two, three. Yeah, I also saw that this is one, two, three. One, two, three. Interesting. Okay, what about Alex? One, two, three. Okay. So I get the opposite. Oh, because maybe you are... Um... No. Let me check. Uh, console. Okay. Let's test this one here. And these two. What am I missing? Save. Refresh. Uh, Alex123. Submit. 123. Password. False. Yeah, so. Hmm. Okay, let me try to create new user. Is it that one is a string and the other one is a number? Or let's see. Uh, let's see. Refresh. Alex with one, two, three, one, two, three, submit. Yep, so we have one. And yeah, we have this one. So now if I go back, refresh, Alex, one, two, three, submit. Hmm, interesting. Do we do something wrong with compare? Or is it always return false? Let me just quickly check if you use again bcrypt. I just want to check it here. So we have bcrypt and then bcrypt compare. Ah, I hard code it. <laughs> See, <laughs> it doesn't take. Yeah, that is why. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So that should work. Sometimes silly mistakes, silly mistakes. Okay, so now if one two three, yeah, access granted. Yeah, and if you use one two three four, invalid password. So this is how you verifying your users yeah so uh that is why bcrypt is helpful because in database you have random things and uh you actually can hash the username as well 
So you have zero information, like for somebody who will steal your database, for, th for them, that will be very hard to debug which user is what. So the good practice is to hash your usernames as well. Yeah, okay, uh, cool. Any questions on this one? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the next step is tokens. So tokens, they contain encrypted data. Again, more encryption. Uh, so front end logs in. So you can basically log in with token. It, you don't need the password or login. You can use token to be authorized. Uh, backend will generate token for you and frontend will store the token. It can be stored in uh, local storage or it can be stored in uh, cookies, etc. Uh, and user returns, uh, yeah, so us when user returns to the website, frontend will send the token. Let's say from local storage, backend will verify the token. If it's okay, then it will uh, send uh, the correct like authorization, let's say, or throw you an error, right? So this is uh, how it basically, why tokens work, because you, you definitely saw on many websites when you uh, logged in, when you provide a uh, password and uh, login, uh, like this username, you logged in, you did something, you closed the tab, and when you come back in like 10 minutes, you still logged in. So you don't need to log, uh, log in out, uh, again. This is because uh, they use tokens, they use some cookies, etc., to store your like active account. And uh, normally you can define how long uh, the token should be valid. It can be valid for hour, two, day, whatever. Or uh, you can never expire them. But why you want to expire your tokens? Because imagine that somebody will hack your browser and steal the token. So that means that they will uh, be able to get into your account with that token. And this is what you don't want to do. And that is why uh, normally you have uh, tokens that are expiring in like in a few hours. Yeah. So uh, you might also notice that on some banks you have, uh, you can, uh, they asking you like, are you still active? Do you want to continue? Because basically token is expiring because they know that they are setting token for XM for, I don't know, 30 minutes. And if you're not active for certain minutes, they are saying, hey, your token will expire. Ooh, we lost Thomas. Let's wait. Let me check. Do, 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 do. Yeah, cool. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, no worries. Uh, yeah, so uh, you saw in banks that it can expire in 30 minutes. This is, uh, that is why they have a pop-up where they showing you do you want to continue if yes when you click yes it will actually send another request generate a new token and re redefine the token on your laptop and token has three parts it has header where you're providing some data you have payload and signature so you will see that uh, this is the typical token and uh, the the most common tokens i would say or library for the tokens is a JWT, which is JSON Web Tokens. And uh, this is the header where you're specifying uh, the configuration for your token and you can specify algorithm like SH256. Uh, this is the most uh, popular one and, and type, which is JWT in our case. And uh, payload is basically the data that you are passing so you, you're passing the like user, user data. 
uh, and you store it as a string. Uh, yeah, so you pass in as a JSON, basically as a JSON. And uh, the last bit is the signature from, uh, this is your secret. So the secret, uh, you need to store it securely on your date, uh, on your backend, because uh, you will use that secret uh, to kind of decode uh, your, uh, your token. So that is why secret, it should be very, and normally you will see that, <coughs> sorry, the secret is something ridiculous, like, uh, something like that, that kind of secret. Uh, yeah, so basically, and you pass in the secret, uh, and here the rule is as longer secret is better and stronger. So keep that in mind. And here, Ricardo, did you use JWT? Yes, sir. Okay, so you're an expert. <laughs> Not really. No. Nope. And I'm only listening. I'm not actually looking at, at the monitor. I'm, I'm sorry for that. But uh, I'm, I'm just listening. Okay, no worries. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm back. I have some connection due to as well. Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, so here, uh, again, we will use a JWC simple, by the way. So we need to install by. All what, what, oh, right, sorry, i not authorized. Wait a second, please. I need to author be authorized. Uh, wait a second, please. Uh, Log me out. So yeah, we want to use JWT simple. Uh, this is just a pack, another package. Uh, JWT simple uh, npm. So it is, yeah, uh, the, the name stands for the actual meaning. It is just a very simple version to use for JWT. And uh, for you, it's basically just encode and decode. And this is pretty much it. So uh, yeah, you're given the payload and you're given the secret. Uh, so let's actually go back and install our uh, JWT on our payload is the username and, and a password. Yeah, 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 exactly. Beautiful. So now we can use uh, JWT, require JWT, simple. Yeah. So now what I want to do is imagine that we have uh, successful, uh, like the page with success, and we have page, uh, and we have page with, uh, I'm just thinking, where, where we, uh, we, like home page and the success page. So I will, what we will do, that, that should be handled on the front end. So we need to quickly uh, open our index.js and uh, const form, uh, I just want to handle my form uh, by ID and that, sorry, that should be our login form. Uh, <laughs> so that should be our login by ID and now form.submit, right? Add event listener, submit and here we have our event. So first of all, we want to event prevent default because we don't want to re refresh the page. Event and prevent default. And next step is uh, let me just think. So, so basically, just to make sure I'm, I'm clear, the success we saw and, and valid certification in the front end, they don't see it. Uh, Say again, sorry. 
No, so what we did um, with the authentication, this was just the back end. But um, you know, like the message we saw, the rest dot send, the yeah. front end doesn't see it. No, no, nothing. It everything is happening on the back end. Yeah. And then the rest send. Uh, how do you make it interact with the front end? Um, uh, so basically response just just a response and in our case we uh, just send in different data right we potentially can send some just data or whatever oh, yeah. okay, okay. and JWT that is why I want to show you because uh, with JWT basically what you do you submit in a form imagine you have a login page you submit in a form you send in credentials password and login to the backend backend We'll check that, and if it's successful, we'll send you back the res as a response. We'll send you the token, <coughs> and that token you will do another query uh, to verify that token. And if the token is valid, then you want to redirect the user. Uh, then you want to redirect the user to the uh, uh, like home page. But if the token is not valid. You want to keep the user on this this same page, right? Okay. Yeah. So let me quickly check. Yeah. So here we were here. Uh, I just want to get um, inputs. Uh, I just want to take. So okay. Event dot target uh, dot. Uh, query selectors all like right so i want to select all inputs then i want to build the object const user object object what we can do is just uh, do inputs reduce and here we will have uh, accumulator and input and we will have uh, we starting from empty object and then we have just accumulator uh, input dot name with input dot value uh, return uh, not like return but wait a second equals and then return return accumulator yeah so we will build an object so let me just uh, console lock the object i want to make sure that we are doing the right thing uh, if you go to the front end refresh alex123 beautiful why we just prevent event prevent yeah, default uh what have i oh i might not refresh the page Alex, one two three no we still why we are navigating to another page uh is it because we still we have an action potentially we have an action uh let me just remove Go back, refresh. Alex, one, two, three. It's still refreshing. That's disturbing. Are we selecting the right thing? Let me just check. Form get element by ID is logging, right? Okay, let me just check. Am I do add event listener submit? Yeah, looks about right. Hmm, why it doesn't prevent default? Uh, any ideas what's going on here? Why on submit? That should work. Event dot prevent default. Console log click. I just want to see 
Alex. Uh, one, two, three, four. It's still refreshing the page. Hmm. That's odd. So what am I doing wrong? default form ah oh my gosh blind me i haven't added my script <laughs> src uh so that should be our index.js it just doesn't work so alex one two three submit okay accumulator is not defined it's not defined because what's going on like this <coughs> refresh alex one two three submit use is not a function <coughs> right why why it's not a function can anyone re remind me If you have an a it's not a function because what's wrong with inputs? Oh, because it's multiple. Uh, yeah, it's node list. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let's try again. Alex, one, two, one, one, two, three. Yeah. So now we are building an object, right? Beautiful. So. Uh, now what we want to do is just when we submit uh, we have we build in an object create and now we want to fetch right we want to fetch to uh, HTTP localhost 3000 uh, what is a login login I believe then we want to pass a method post another thing uh, is content type type application JSON right and we have body where we will stringify our object our user object yep so because uh another thing this is asynchronous so theoretically we can just do them and we are expecting some response right uh and let's say that's response as usual that should be response.json and another then we have our data and let's see what we will have just console log log uh, data yeah it's very simple logic and here we are doing validation so if everything is valid because we are checking the validation uh, we are doing where is it we want to respond, not access granted, but we want to send an object, JSON, a token, right? JWT dot encode. And we want to encode. Uh, so in our case, we have a payload. So we want to encode basically this, right? and if you follow their documentation and the secret so uh, let's create a secret secret key very secret key I don't tell anyone yep pretty secret and we will use our secret key 
to encode the to create the token right so let's see what we will have so if the credentials is valid i just want to uh i want to send the token to the front end so let's see refresh uh if i do um <coughs> uh, alex one two three submit great refused because of the course or no failed to fetch why what, what's going on refused did i stop the server i think i did yeah i did stop the server sorry my bad so refresh alex one two three submit no response why we don't have any response so we have click let me just double check what we are doing wrong do, 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 do. ah is it because yeah this is a string right so we want to pass an object token see that we have our error here Cannot read property password of undefined. Uh, which line is it? 50. Ooh. Selected user. I think we have. Right, so we couldn't find the user. Which user do we have in database? Alex. Yeah, Alex. Refresh. Alex. One, two, three. Still have the same. So we couldn't find why we can't find the user. Console look. We have selected user. We oh, have to do the find index rather than find. The find still should be fine because we're looking by name and we will get an object. And it is it was working, right? So, uh, yeah, the name should be submit. Undefined, undefined, undefined. What's going on? Ah. Is it because of that? Is it because of the Unreal code? That might be it. Uh, let me try again. Submit. No, still undefined. So why our body is empty? So we're not sending actually in anything inside body. Uh, any ideas what's going on? Content type. Method. Hmm. Where, where can we see the link between the front end and the back end? Is it the fetch method? Yeah. So we're posting the user object, which is yep. taking your input name and your input value. And the password, yeah. And yep. where's the password? It's, uh... Uh, so name and value, we're building the object. User object is uh, like na username, user and the value. I'll show you in a sec. Uh, yeah, so I'm stringy fine, right? So let's see what we have here. Alex, one, two, three, submit. This is what we are sending. Yeah. Right? That is why this is how we pass in data. I'm not sure about this one. Is it application JSON or applications JSON? No, it should be fine. Why application JSON? Why it's complaining? Why the body is empty? I'm just thinking why body is empty. Stringify, uh, and it looks like we're not passing actually something to to the user. 
uh, to the backend. See that we are hitting the login, right? The, the, the page is logging. Uh, login. So we're actually hitting the endpoint, but why the body is empty? You need to put away, maybe? No, we, we're doing the JSON. We have expressed JSON here. So I'm wondering, just uh, let me try to hit submit. Yeah, same thing. We have undefined, undefined. Uh, why our body is undefined? Let me just check this one as well. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that we're sending in a wrong way. Yeah, empty object. Request body. What am I doing wrong? I'm pretty sure there's something wrong with our how we pass in data. Let me just quickly check uh, with uh, our postman and we will try to send the same data with the postman. So my postman is opened here. So we have post, we have and body will be this send cannot post what oh right login right login send yeah it's generating the token so why it's sending from here but not from there. We have some silly error, I believe. Method. What I'm missing, content. So it's posting your token. Uh, so it's responding with token, right? Ah, uh, yes, in your backend you have to respond with Yeah, token. yeah, so we are responding so our fetch request is wrong. Let me just double check. Maybe I'm just blind. Fetch post. Come on. Post. Uh, so we have post, cache, credentials, headers. My goodness. <laughs> headers, uh, right? Because you, you providing your configuration in headers. Oh my God. <laughs> so uh, refresh. Now Alex, one, two, three, submit. Yeah, you have your token. Brilliant. So we don't need this one anymore. And we don't need our click as well. Yeah. So now we get in the token on the front end which is great and uh, what we want to do is stay on this page if you have token basically when we get in the token we want to set token to our local storage locals hello, hello can you hear us hey. hello Thomas I can hear you okay Thomas, we can't hear you. Uh, okay, we have some definitely troubles with uh, this. We can't hear. Hello, can anyone hear me? Yeah, now we can hear you. Yeah, okay, so local storage and let's say token. I want to set in data, right? data uh, dot token so this is what I want to set right so we, when I log in I want to uh, set the token okay 
So now <coughs> I want to create another page. Uh, let's say I want to have a page. Uh, ooh. Hello? Hello? Yep. Hey, sorry, it looks like my. I don't know what's going on. I keep on being disconnected. Okay, okay, yep. So now I want to create another page and have uh, h1 uh, main page and potentially I want to add logout uh, button logout yeah so something like that very simple ID in our case will be logout and we want to have a script here as well so I want to add script because we want to handle log, uh, logout. So script, script, my goodness. This is a little nice. Yeah. Script SRC and let's say I want to have main.js. And I need to create my main.js as well, main.js. Okay, so what in main.js, basically now here, we can do to uh, main, and we have main page, right? Yeah. Uh, so we, we can do, we can, we can go there. But what I want to do is actually, uh, if I get a token, so if my token is valid, uh, so let me actually see what we will get when I provide the wrong credentials. Submit. Yeah, we're getting an error, right? So which is fine. So all I just need, I just want to nicely handle this error. Potentially, uh, we can have catch, catch error. So log uh, error and put our error. So let's try again. Hopefully we will handle that, Alex. Yeah, we are handling this one. Beautiful. Okay, so it still should be, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter for now, but it's, it's throwing the JSON error because uh, for error from the back end we're not sending actually the json right and we are decoding that on the front end we try to decode it with json so theoretically we can do something like json and pass object with error here invalid password and we can do or just error message so save and here we will have error dot error message i think that should work so refresh i hope that will work no still 500 but we don't have the error because it's undefined let me just check i just want to make sure Ooh, look at this uh, alex yeah anyway forget about this for we have 500 which is fine for us and if we have one two three uh one two three submit you actually submit anything um that's odd let me refresh alex one two three submit yeah, oh right, because we don't do anything. We just set in, in a. Uh, we're just setting the. Um, uh, how do you call it? Oh my goodness. Uh, the, in a local storage, the token, right? So we have the token here. See? So let's see uh, here if we find. So on the, on the top level, I just want to check if local storage dot token uh, is set 
So we want to basically, we want to check does our token is is our token valid but for now we just want to check is token just is any token uh do you want to no we probably want to have another fetch uh yeah let's start with this one uh so if you have a token then i want to just send yeah we want to have fetch fetch uh, with something like yeah basically pretty much same thing but we want to have like a token verification is it verification uh, yeah and we pass in our token right so we want to pass the, the actual, it's not, oh, sorry. That should be an object. And we want to have token. And we pass in our token that we have in the database uh, that we have in local storage. So when we de de decrypt in and we want just to see the response. Console log data. So uh, yeah, if I have a token, I want to send it to the uh, backend to verify that this is a valid token. So let me create a, another endpoint, app.post. Here we have uh, response request response. And now what we will have, we will check, is it the valid data? So what we want to do is basically just take this decode and have our token request body token, right? And let's actually console log what do we have from here? console lock from the token so yeah let's reload the page that's supposed to hit yeah to string to undefined uh cannot read property to string where do we have to string um sorry let me check decode token oh yeah right and you need to pass secret so token and secret so here we want to pass secret as well so if i refresh this page we are actually getting from that token the value right yeah and now we can verify this user is password valid. We can do this. We can find we are doing the same thing. So what we are doing is user const user. And here we will check if user we are finding the user by username, right? That will be selected user. And then we want to do whatever we do here. So you want to await for this one. And here that should be a sync. This is a very messy code, but uh, yeah, this is what we need to do now so if it's valid user we want to respond with uh, some verification right so if the user you send in token it is valid and we responding with uh, true for example uh, status code to 200 let's say status 
so response response dot status 200 for example just a simple thing else status uh, response status should be 500 this is pretty much it so uh, now if you send the valid token we will get uh, the response so if in my front end I just want to get status here right so in the response I want to get status so if remember the very first exercises with fetch you had response dot status I think that was just 200 then you want to redirect window location and that should be uh, is it main is it how we set in window location do you remember href window location href um, yeah I think that should be it so window href equals uh, in our case that should be should it be main i think that that will work so right if you load and token is valid then we will redirect to main so let me go here refresh uh, we still have some errors here Ooh. user is not defined users is not defined right why users is not defined because we forgot about this one yeah that is why but we need our users so let's try again <clears throat> refresh still some errors username is not defined is it username uh, users all oh, right because this one is just user uh, let me just take username was it just username do you remember <coughs> yeah username i think it's just username uh, i can't remember you can see the program and uh password should come from here as well let's try <laughs> a few more errors user is not defined line 63 all right yeah basically this i think i hope this is it refresh okay so no errors response status 200 uh, i don't know send Success. Uh, um, or for What is the spelling here? Just to save time. Yeah, no spellings. That's all. Oh, Z. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah. So, American style. Now, if I refresh the page, I'm redirecting to my, it redirected me to main, right? See that if I try to go here, hit enter, it redirects me to main. Right? Can you sort? Can you repeat that again, sorry? Yeah, so if I go to the main page, hit enter, it redirects me to main. Because you are the thing. Be yeah, because I have the token. If I remove this token, delete and now if I go to form I'm here you need to log in again okay. yeah so if I do one two three submit I got a token but I haven't been redirected right so that means but now if I refresh it will redirect me 
This is because on my front end, I just haven't done this. Uh, so I'm doing that on initial load, but I'm not doing it here. So which I should have. Okay, so now what you want to do is just to make sure that your logout is working. So if you land on this page, you, have, you want to do two things. Uh, first, verify uh, this so that you're actually the token is valid, right? Because if token is not valid, you want to redirect to the root. So if it's not valid, right? You want to redirect to root. And another thing is that you want to have event listener for your logout. Oh. Yeah. So let me actually check is it working? So if I remove my token, refresh my page. Ooh. All right, sorry. I don't want to have this wrapper. Uh, I want to always take the token. Save, refresh. Why I'm not doing anything? Do you need a fetch for that? Uh... Yeah, because I'm, I'm sending data. Oh yeah, because you're sending the data from your um, local host, yeah. Yeah. There's, oh, I, I'm getting errors on my server. Uh, yeah, I think that because this token is not valid. So we want to do, what we want to do is, uh, so it's undefined on my server, where we hit in the verification, we want to make sure that token is valid. If token is valid, um, we can actually do that in other way. We can handle that on the front end because here, what we can do, if uh, if no token, I just want to redirect to the main page, right? Just straight away. Again, this is very messy code. Yeah, see, now it just redirects me to the main page. So if I try to go to main now, hit enter, it just redirects me to the main page. But if I do provide credentials, I'm here. Right? Refresh, I'm still here. Yeah. So yeah, okay, beautiful. So it is working. Now, as, you, as, as we said, we just need to have log out PTM by, that should be log out, right? And here we just, we will have log out BTN. Uh, BTN, and event listener, click event and what we want to do is just when you clicked you want to remove the token yeah so redirect and remove the token so uh as i remember local storage remove dot, dot remove something. yeah 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 i think that you're right uh remove item remove yeah. So where is the remove item? Yeah, brilliant. So in our case, we will do remove uh, token, right? So now, if you refresh, so now you can see that if you go to main page, it redirect us to uh, to the root. It redirect to main, but if you click logout, it redirects us back, and if you have main it will redirect us back to the main one because we are not logged out. Oh, uh, login, logged in. Yeah. So that is why we use tokens. Uh, basically, uh, just to keep the session and do not uh, 
ask user every time they reload the page to provide credentials. And <coughs> sorry, and you can use uh, J. I'll, I'll show you JSON Web Tokens package. It's like because this one is a simple version, uh, but we also have, I think this one. Yeah, as you can see, it's pretty popular. Five millions per per week. Uh, so here you can actually set expirations, expiry expires in. So you can add this configuration and do more sophisticated uh, token management. Yeah, but uh, for us, uh, it's just basic verification. So you use Bcrypt to store all users' data, all uh, all I mean confidential data like passwords and usernames etc and uh to keep the session to keep the uh, and verify the user you use tokens to yeah just to make their life easier any questions mm, not for me no man this was hard um I think I need to rewatch the video a few times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of bips and bobs. I agree. Uh, that's where you see the, the front end and, and back end are. I mean, I guess this is just doing big enough stuff, but still, you can see that these are two separate worlds. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is why, ideally, because again, uh, Ricardo will say that uh, uh, you can keep them in one world. Because uh, PHP, basically, you can write front end and the back end. Uh, because uh, with PHP, you generating H, uh, you can generate like HTML and send this HTML to the front end. So you kind of combine, but in uh, in a, a good world, let's say, and this is what we have now. You actually separate in front end and the back end, and you have this API and these endpoints where you're sending data, receiving data, etc. And is React going to be um, unifying some of it? Because I mean, what we did is we kind of did a lot of juggling between the front-end HTML, JS, and then the back-end, uh, the database file. Like, there's a lot of juggling between the files. Now when you get to React, you're gonna love it. It's gonna be like, wow, this is how simple I can do this front end app. And I had to learn all that JavaScript heavy thing two months ago. <laughs> so you're gonna love it. <laughs> yep, yeah. So uh, it, it doesn't, uh, so yes, you, you'll see that uh, the, a lot of things that you've learned with JavaScript is uh, much simpler to do with React. Mm -hmm. But still, to be good with React, you need to know JavaScript very well. Of course, no, no, of course. Uh, and uh, but React is just just a JavaScript uh, framework to render your uh, layouts. So you will see that uh, f technically in React we don't have uh, HTML. We have JSX, uh, which is just an <laughs> another sub language. It's not. It's it's a big word to say that it is a language because you're technically writing HTML and uh, you can put variables inside. But we will talk about that during the React. Yeah, but React is, again, it's nothing uh, common with backend. It's it okay. just, yeah, it's just okay. frontend. Okay. okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I know that was hard. I, I agree uh, on, you have that server. Uh, yeah, on Wednesday, you will have server-side rendering and uh, Thomas will show you how to render, basically how to create HTML files on a server and send it in your responses to the front end. So once you hit endpoint like we are hitting here, you can actually send not just data, but you can send the whole HTML file with everything. Oh, wow. Yeah, 
So the reason for uh, server-side rendering is that it is just faster because you have already pre-generated everything and you're just sending data to the front end. Yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah, you'll talk about that on Wednesday. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Uh, I see that we're running late today. <laughs> And uh, yeah, see yes. you. Thank you so much, Basil. No worries. See you on you. next week. See you. Bye. Bye. Yeah.